Honestly, I'd say that Digimon World Next Auto is almost a perfect Digimon World game. It's insanely fun, and frankly, it improves a lot over the original and redigitized. And I do mean it when I say this is one of the better Digimon games, but even though there's a bunch right with this game, there's still a bunch wrong with it too, and honestly, if I have any complaints, it's only from the PS4 version since that's the only one I play, and that goes with the positives as well. First thing, this soundtrack is actually really amazing, and I probably said this in my Digimon World 1 video, but a lot of the Digimon World games have really amazing soundtracks, and I guess with association, just normal of the Digimon tracks. And honestly, some of the really good ones will probably have to be the city theme, uh, daytime and nighttime, a blue chant, the desert theme, the fighting music, and just a lot of them are amazing, and frankly, I still listen to a lot of the soundtrack on my own time, and you know, that just shows how good it is in my opinion. First off, I'll go with the gym. For that, you can get bonuses depending on what type of day it is. No, 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 no what the, the time of day. Then there's also bonuses depending on like what food you eat because now there's like different training food that can help you raise the stats. Then there's also where your partners are on the board. Like for example, if you train one on wisdom and the other on stamina, you they'll get like a rival bonus to where like it just you know helps you a little bit gain a little bit extra stats and then those uh gain the evolutions a lot easier explains a lot more but you know i'll get that a little bit later the next biggest thing i love in xl is that the areas in this game are really cool to explore again i don't know if i mentioned this a little bit earlier but i even though that a lot of the areas are like the same like volcano desert and like stuff like that they'll still really nice to like look at in my opinion and they really show like each small area is showing up to the point where it doesn't get drawn out boring and frankly even then the music still really works up with the area and matches it really well and in the case of next auto i also really like how they've made the materials like for upgrading the city all over scattered throughout the map so like some areas have some materials like for example you know the desert area generally having more stone and mineral types while say for example like uh i know the stone area like vast plateau or something generally has like almost all the materials but, like say later on you would have to go and deeper in the digital world to get some type of materials and stuff like that and that leads into another reason why I like this game, the fact that you get to upgrade the city. It feels really nice to get just the amount of materials to upgrade so in part, and it just makes the whole game a lot easier. There are also upgrades you can make to the gym that's outside of the builder's house. Like for example, you can upgrade the equipment so you can like level, I think the maximum is like level 3. Uh, for like, you know, it gives you bonus that like, for example, like, let's say level one would give you, say, like, on average, say, like, 20 strength, while, like, say, level two would give you, like, say, 35 or something strength. So, you know, it's the upgrades you can make to the gym just helps out a little bit more than what the normal uh, builder's house would do with up upgrading the city. And in my opinion, I kind of like the small changes they do with the mini games for the gym because I played the other ones and I don't like how, like, it's like, for example, World 1, how it's like you have to get the slot machines exactly right to get the extra stats. And maybe with three digit tags, it's a little bit just because all you have to do with that is just hit the circle button or whatever in time when the thing happens. Or, like, you know, just depending on the mini games, so like, you practice with it enough, you get better at it. But with the next level, all you have to do is, like, just wait till the cursor gets over its own thing and press the X button in time and then boom, extra strats. I kind of like that better just because it makes it a little bit easier and I don't really like Rejectize, but to be fair, I haven't had enough practice in it, so maybe that's why I'm shit and that's why I'm complaining about it. But, like, you know, again, I just like the simple press X to get the time just to get, like, the bonus, and I kind of like that in my opinion. Moving on from the upgrades and the gym for a bit, I still do kind of like the list of Digimon you can get, but, and I do mean but in this case, because frankly, it's not the greatest, but I'll get to why I dislike a little bit later, but for now, I say it's still a pretty big roster, and in the case of the North American version, they added a few new ones, like for example, the Animon, the Unity Spirits from Frontier, the Boss Mode, Digimon from Death Squad, Chaos Mon, and a few more. And there were some like gameplay change, or like just like some stuff from the video version that they also changed. I'm not going to talk about it, but from what I've seen, they were also pretty nice. And 
the last main point I'll be talking about is the fact that you have two Digimon instead of one this time, and I, I again, I 100% love that. I know at first when I saw gameplay of it, I thought it was going to be a little bit harder to level them up and like, uh, basically like take care of them. But after playing the game for myself, it, it's really easy because I know a lot of times, again, for the gym, you can immediately pick where they want to go. And for like, say, washroom breaks, uh, literally they both go at the same time. Same thing with eating where well, it automatically sets them on both. So you can, if you have enough food, because you know, you're going to need two, it automatically just feeds them both. And again, that's why I find really amazing. And say for, again, the evolution tree, it, it, it's a lot easier to have them evolve into, say, Megas, Ultimates, stuff like that, just because, you know, there's two of them and you get to go through the evolution tree a lot quicker and, like, say, like, find out the requirements for each of them a lot easier. And frankly, that's a really big addition because the other games, it's a lot harder because, you know, you had one Digimon at one time and it takes them a long time just to, like, go through the motions. I'm pretty sure you get it at this point. Other than the really nice uh, pluses that they made to this game, this game is freaking busted, at least on normal difficulty. Like, I know for one, it takes a lot more grinding to get to the higher evolutions, and yeah, I said it was easier, but on normal, it's like they, they boosted up a lot of the stat requirements, and it can get annoying for like certain evolutions. Like, I know the Agumon line is generally like a lot of requirements, so like, if you don't, like, I feel like the, you would only get those evolutions, like, midway into the game because i know like a lot of fans would probably want to get agumon and Gabumon and stuff like that as a start but you realistically can't just because of the fact how low the stat will come like how low your digimon stats are going to be at the start and the fact that the gym won't give you enough to get those at that level and on a similar note the enemy digimon can get really annoying and normal as well because they deal a lot of damage and they take a lot of damage if Frankly, if you don't put in the grinding, this I really think that Bandai did not really balance this out from when they put it over to the PS4 and brought it over to the US. It's either that like you either get destroyed or you destroy them. It's it's mostly the mix of either though. Like sometimes you get in the middle, but like the other times I've seen that it's when you basically just spam recovery items. And frankly, I don't like that since a lot of the times you you won't have enough money to buy them, so that can get annoying. There's the amount of grinding you have to do for your Digimon, and then there's the amount of grinding you have to do to get materials for upgrading the city. Because, again, upgrading the city makes things a lot easier, but a lot of times that the items you need, you would ha literally have to go out, like venture around for like maybe a couple of minutes, save, reload, I think that method was like, you know, saving, reloading, and the item should come back, I'm not sure. But, again, really annoying that you have to, spend a lot of time just grinding just to get the better part of the game and make it a lot easier. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why Next Order or like say the World Games isn't all as accessible just because, you know, hella grinding just to get th things easier. And again, for the upgrades, from my experience, uh, Gigi's house, the town square, the gym, the item shop are some of the hardest ones to get. And frankly, on my first playthrough, I think I maxed out like the the uh meat farm pretty early on or like i managed to upgrade it quite a bit so like that wasn't much of a problem but again though the, the ones i mentioned up before really annoying and frankly it just takes a long time you know i've said this numerous times at this point and now we're finally getting to the part i mentioned before the goddamn roster and frankly there's 217 digimon and a lot of them are recolors and yeah i know this is a port from the v version but why did they think panning out the wasu with a bunch of recolors would help that. Like, I'm not even kidding. Those six Agumons, that includes toy Agumons, three different Gabumons, three different Growlmons slash War Growlmons, three Cubimons, three Garurumons, and there's one that's basically Garurumon but with a Thor U, and there are some other ones that got reskins, but those are usually around like two-ish, and I'm not even counting the evolution, like for example, Gatsumon, Icemon, Mediumon, I'm not even counting those just because those are higher level. I'm talking about like recolors of the same exact mon, like something I mentioned before. There was a goddamn orange growl mod. Why is there an orange one? I, it's really annoying. Like, I mean, I'm also counting the black evolutions, like, you know, black Agumon, stuff like that. Those ones I don't mind as much, but when there's a need for a orange growl mod, that's when I got draw the goddamn line. Okay, okay, enough screaming, but. Still, I would honestly say that this game is pretty average, other than minus the really annoying issues that 
bang the head done. Frankly, this game still has uh, plenty of positives, and frankly, when you hit all the right moments, this game really is something. And I would still recommend you play this over Digimon World One and we digitize eh, if you if you want really want to give that one a go sure go ahead but i would still 100 percent play next dollar if you got the ps4 version because i've heard that the vita version isn't as optimized and it runs you know like it runs worse and there isn't much of a a center because you know the ps4 version now a lot of people got a ps4 and frankly it's just you know the better way to play and even then yeah, this is a feeling different from Cyber, Cyber Sloth, and I feel like that's the reason why people didn't like it as much. But frankly, still, you you can get a really good time out of this game when you get it going. You know, you know this has been Vike. See you guys later. And yeah, I know this is kind of longer than my usual videos, but you know, I had a lot to say about this one. So you know, see you guys later.